Minnesota. 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 LA. No. No, LA no. Ellie, the brand, or yeah, whatever. Yeah, brand. Yeah, Dallas. We love Texas. Texas. Oh, we love yeah, Texas. Oh yeah. All right. You ready? For me? Do we just? Yeah, I'll just start. Okay. <laughs> All right, good morning, everybody. Morning. Uh, my name is Ethan Bridges. My name is Michael Pastor. Brian Whitaker. Uh, Taishi can be with us today. He has some family uh, stuff going on with his family. But, uh, anyway, so we're. We uh, created our proposal proposal towards Uber, and this is how our presentation is going to go. We're going to start out with the history of the company. We're going to move on to the statement of the problem that we're going to solve and the opportunity that we're going to fill. And then we're going to go in depth on the solution, which will be the after effect, and then we're going to talk about the scope of this proposal, how far we're going to go, and then we're going to introduce our facts and evidence on the issue, and we're going to propose our actual approach and then create a work plan, and then we're gonna break down the cost. Right, we're gonna start with the history. Uh, Uber was founded in 2009, and it was originally founded as Uber Cab. Uh, the founders of Uber were Garrett Camp, Oscar Salazar, and Conrad Whalen. Uh, Travis Cantillat was a founder too, but he, was, he added as the advisor and the programmer. Like He dealt with all the social media and putting stuff out there to get Uber like around because it originally started in San Francisco and that's the only place it was but Travis ended up becoming the CEO of the company uh, the company spread from San Francisco to New York uh, Manhattan and that was the only two places where were when it first started off um, between 18 or April 2015 and 16 Uber accounted for 170,000 trips a day and that was just in those two states. Um, when it first began, it costed 1.5 times what a taxi would cost, but you could order it directly from your phone. And it was more like expensive cars. They called them like the black cars or whatever. They were just more expensive cars. Um, December 2011, Uber began to spread internationally, starting in France. And in 2012, UberX project started, which made cheaper rides and more cars like Prius, Cadillacs, and just regular Chevys and Fords, and make it cheaper for like, like, I guess not the more higher class people. <coughs> um, Uber Rush launches in 2014, uh, which was a bicy bicycle delivery, and it went to, came to Manhattan. It was like four dollars per mile or seven dollars base pay if it was under a mile. Um, a few months after that, Uber introduced Uber Pool, which was if me and him wanted to get a ride, we could split the Uber to save cost. If you were going in the same direction, it was just another thing program they brought to make things like cheaper. And then in 2015, they launched Uber Eats, and this is one of their most successful programs they launched. It allows you to order food and then directly uh, to deliver it to you on demand, which save people time and money or gas money and the time of their day. Uber became a powerhouse of their transportation. Um, their company is valued at $72 billion. Their nearest competitor is Lyft, and they're at $15.1 billion, so just way above all the competition there. And it's as big as GM, Ford, and Honda. And in a few years, it's projected to be one of the biggest companies ever. Um, it continues to launch programs and ideas to boost their company to gain more advantages over the people. And we're going to state the problem and opportunity. So Uber is very successful, but one thing they, f they need to focus on is helping elders in a more rural area like Raleigh or Charlotte. 
uh, people, elders like the ones that are not able to drive or they don't like driving, they're just not capable of getting around very good. Um, elders usually rely on their kids and their neighbors and other family members to take them to like doctor's appointments or places where they need to go when they can't really do it themselves. So if Uber can focus on them, it would uh, kind of help their business gain more money or just be a, a good area to focus on. And you can it's pretty easy, so the elders can learn it pretty easy and quick. Um, Uber Eats would be a good thing for them too. So in the later on in the day or like rush hour and all those times, if they get hungry or they don't feel like driving to eat or waiting to eat, they can call it and Uber <coughs> come bring it to them so they don't have to drive. And uh, this is very, very beneficial because you know, if they can't get around themselves, they don't have to rely on others, they can just call or, and do that. Um, introducing another program like this is a big step, I mean, nationwide, not just in Raleigh or Charlotte, just everywhere. This is a great option for seniors and it's also easy to uh, use. All they have to do is get on an app and press a button and uh, they won't have a hard time learning how to do it. So then we're going to talk about the solution to this issue. And um, um, the solution to this issue, like he said, it was to access this marginalized <coughs> demographic. And by accessing this marginalized demographic, you, uh, you increase your market share. Because um, there is a, uh, a chart where they map out who uses Uber and who uses Lyft based on by age groups. And we found that, uh, of course, the majority of people that use Uber and Lyft were between the ages of 20 and 30, 20 and 28, so millennials. So, but we found out that a significantly smaller percentage of people that use Uber were people 65 and older. I think it accounted for 8% of those people. So I think this is a marginalized group and it's an opportunity and a weakness that Uber has in their company. And by accessing that, they can continue their competitive advantage. And uh, another thing is uh, this, uh, offering ride sharing for elderly people, specifically for elderly people, um, will access them because they're in that age group where you start losing power. You start losing the control of your everyday life. You start relying on people more. And as people get older, like I said, their bodies restrict, restrict their freedom. Like you have people that can't run anymore. They love running, but they can't run as much as anymore. You have people that love lifting, they can't lift as much anymore. You have people that love driving, but there's some laws in some uh, states that restrict driving past a certain age. So handing this uh, Uber specifically for elderly people will give the power into their hands. And like I said, we're going to start small and then we're going to go large just so we can iron out any things that aren't working. And then we're going to move into the scope. <clears throat> so yeah, we want to start small, then go big into areas like New York City, in San Francisco, but by using small towns such as Pembroke, Maxson, and Red Springs and other surrounding areas, we can figure out what can be improved or what can be added to be more beneficial. And especially when you're in these small areas, there's not a, a prevalent public transportation system that other elderly people can use. So I think this will take hold pretty fast. And um, back to evidence. All right. So like I said. Over 65% of elderly, elderly people get their license taken away each year due to their old age in some states. And in Robinson County alone, out of, out of every 10 elderly, elderly people, only three of them can drive themselves. That's 30% of people that have to rely on outside people to take them where they need to go. To the hospital, to see their family, just to go out and have a good time. And almost 55% of Robinson County citizens are senior, 70 years and older which is a pretty large amount of population. And the average of a non-driving senior citizens leave their homes is only once, one to three times a week. And then we move on to the proposed approach. Uh, yeah, like I said, our service will provide anything the elderly would need, such as doctor visits, uh, trips to the grocery store, taking their groceries in, running errands, or just want to ride around for the entertainment. And uh, we will also deliver necessary goods such as prescriptions, food, and packages uh, with Uber Eats with the food and rolling for a pharmacy type deal. 
and uh, <clears throat> and utilizing our uh, Uber, uh, Uber services will be much less in the competition. And then we got the work plan. All right. In order for this approach to be taken, a plan must be gathered for this to be done. The first step will be broadcasting your services to the targeted audience. And in this case, our audience is the elderly. So ways that we could ca capture the elderly's attention could be you know, advertising places like television. A lot of elderly people sit and watch television since they can't go anywhere and drive. So they can see the advertisement for Uber and potentially use that. Other places they go is the doctor's office. And when they go to the doctor's office, they often have like ads and stuff sitting on the tables and stuff. And elderly people often read through them so they can see the ads for Uber. And um, yeah, and that's where most elderly individuals go. After an individual is aware of the services, they will be able to contact them from the ads that they see. From there, they'll be connected. They would be connected with the driver after they call the number. And um, they would explain the, to the elderly people what kind of services they could potentially use. If they decide to use them, the driver will then approximate the time for arrival and the time that they should reach their destination. Once the drivers arrive, they'll assist the customer with any bags or materials that they can. Often, when elderly people go to the doctor or wherever they go, they take like their medicine because they have prescriptions to fill and stuff. From here, the customers will be driven to the destination in a timely fashion. Most of the time, we know that elderly people drive pretty slow, so I guess Uber could get them there in a timely fashion. Upon arrival, the customer will be assisted from the vehicle and they'll be returned with their belongings. They'll be able to go inside. You know, some elderly people carry walkers and canes and to help them get inside and stuff. All right, and yeah, before any action can be taken into effect, we understand that Uber will need to see a, a job cost estimate. And for this job costing estimate, we're gonna use a work in process mm -hmm. costing system because this is a homogeneous uh, service. So we're just taking elderly people and it's same across the board. There's no added uh, services or goods. So yeah, this is what a work in process um, job costing sheet looks like. So especially if you're in manufacturing, which we are not, but uh, you have your direct materials, which are materials that go directly into the product. And you have direct labor, which are people working it, which for us will be the drivers. This, uh, the direct labor is the most relevant part of this job costing sheet to this project. And then manufacturing overhead, which is, is not relevant. And then from there, you get your total cost. All right, so like I said before, the direct materials does not apply to this project because we're not manufacturing cars or anything. We are just uh, taking people rides. And Uber is not themselves. They're not the ones driving these people. They have independent drivers to do that for them. All right, so uh, in Uber, the driver takes 75% of the travel fare. For example, if the travel fare, travel fare was $10, then Uber would take home $2.50. All right. And from this, I believe the cost, the pricing should mimic the Uber XO, which is only one price category above the standard Uber X. And that is $2.15 for the initial fee. It's $1.68 per mile on average. Uh, 26 cents per minute on average and a dollar 70 for service costs so I think the uh, by pricing it slightly above the basic amount of the basic uber X price then uber can take home more money while still giving the consumer the uh, added savings and uh, we estimate that in the first quarter Especially in Robeson County, we expect uh, twenty-five hundred dollars in rides, and we broke this down to, uh, I meant twenty. Oh, sorry, twenty-two thousand five hundred rides in, in the first quarter, and from there, we saw that direct labor costs would be thirty-seven thousand dollars. So that's the amount of money that will be going to all the independent drivers driving these people. And from there, like I said, the manufacturing overhead and the direct materials is not really relevant to this project. So we took the direct labor and called that our total. And here are our sources. Thank you.
question. Why did you pick Uber? Why do we pick Uber? Well, Uber is uh, it's one of those things that's becoming more relevant nowadays. It's um, at least for me, like I couldn't imagine like going out at night and like thinking, dang, I, like no matter what sentiment, I have to drive. So like with Uber, <laughs> it's a uh, it's a lot more convenient, and I see like they have a lot of strengths, but they have very few weaknesses, and this is an opportunity they can take advantage of and be even more better than taxi and Lyft. So that's why I picked it. Okay. I think we're done here. Oh, is anybody else present today? No. no. 17 minutes more. It was like 18 minutes. Yeah, I was that's because she's pregnant. Four things? You're up at 2.30 in the morning. Bless her heart.